Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue sur la chaîne YouTube Arkham Chronicle. Today we'll be speaking to you in the language of love, Francais. They do say you can't really know cosmic horror till you've experienced Lovecraft in French. Presenting L'Appel du Cthulhu Illustré, or if our middle school French holds out, The Call of Cthulhu Illustrated. The first thing to note is the size. It is huge, just shy of 14 inches by 10 and a half inches and half an inch thick. Banana for scale. This is great for the illustre, but may prove a little impractical, even for those with large shelves for game boxes. Fingers crossed your book will come shrink wrapped like this, but if it doesn't, check for any transit damage or marks from previous owners. The book is wrapped in a semi-gloss dust jacket with separate illustrations on front and rear giving you a sneak peek into the art style within. The title text on the front and spine is a UV spot gloss giving it a highly reflective quality. The rest of the description and barcode on the rear is a traditional flat white. This is really effective and coupled with the size definitely makes it feel like a luxury product. Removing the dust jacket reveals a matte black cover that actually has one of the interior illustrations monochrome printed on it. This partially wraps round to the back. The front and spine have some attractive hot foil stamping. Unusually, the front doesn't bear the title of the work, only the stories of Howard Phillips Lovecraft, with illustrations by Francois Baranger. More about him later. Another unusual detail is the fact the spine text in France appears to go from bottom to top, whereas in English it reads from top to bottom. You learn something new every day, eh? This silver lettering looks wonderful, and even looking closely, our copy had no perceptible bleed on it. Be aware, the wax paper cover is a magnet for scuffs and fingerprints, so make sure you look after this and keep the dust jacket on. Finally, it is time to open it up, revealing a matte black end paper, which is actually printed black. So when you turn it over, it reveals a natural buff colour on the reverse. And no, someone hasn't blown their nose on our copy, but these fly leaves are actually printed in the style of a handmade paper. So these stains and other imperfections are repeated across the blank pages. The first text we encounter is an introduction by John Howe, a Canadian artist most famous for his Tolkien illustrations and work on the Peter Jackson films, who incidentally has done more than his fair share of Magic the Gathering cards. Born in Canada, educated in France and now living in Switzerland, he isn't such an odd choice to provide a French language introduction. And two pages long, he certainly has a lot to say. Next is the repeat of the cover block, giving Lovecraft pride of place once more. And you get your first look at the stitching, as this product is case bound, meaning that the pages have been sewn in. Groups of folded pages called signatures are stitched together in a process called smith sewing, and these signatures are glued into the binding to make a durable and long lasting fastening. Plus, it also means that you can open it fully and lay it on your lap or a table without any damage to the spine although you will need to apply some pressure in order to encourage the new binding to relax. Then a more traditional title page, and the credits too, listing other works illustrated by Francois Baranger, or in this imprint. Even noted Lovecraft scholar S.T. Joshi makes an appearance. You can also see a little history of the story, which was first written in 1926, but like so much of Lovecraft's work, didn't find a publisher immediately. This would appear in the February 1928 issue of Weird Tales. This translation is from 2012 by Maxime Ladin, and this volume was first published in 2017. The original story is 11,905 words, split into three chapters, and this edition generously spreads this over 65 pages, beginning with the book's original quote which is from Algernon Blackwood, a British writer of the time and probably the world's most prolific author of ghost stories. And this handwritten style really helps to draw you into the work and rightly separate this quote from Lovecraft's own text that begins over the page with part one, The Horror in Clay. And you can tell right away this is a Baranger illustration, as silhouettes, backlit figures and cracking the page down the middle with bright light are all his signature moves. Every double page is one fully painted colour illustration with the text overprinted in either white or black. 
Generally, the pictures are composed to leave an appropriate amount of blank space to accommodate some large text blocks, and each painting is either light or dark, mostly dark, so there is plenty of contrast. A couple of the illustrations are single page portrait, including the chapter breaks, but these are cleverly integrated into the dual page format. There is even a mocked up newspaper when the story references an article in the Sydney Bulletin. The story text is in French, but they have kept the English language advertisements at the base of the page. Baranger gets to flex his storytelling muscles with an exciting montage, some curious viewing angles and sinister details hidden in the background. And as for his depiction of Cthulhu, that octopus, dragon, human caricature, we will leave that judgement up to you, dear reader. Sadly, there is no page ribbon. Clearly, the French are such hardened bibliophiles that they can read more than 10,000 words in one sitting. A couple of things we did notice is that the amount of text per page decreases as you move through the book, giving the impression that the pace is escalating and thus raising the tension, which was quite clever. And another is the text size varies, even within the same paragraph. Sometimes this calls out important lines of text that the author himself separated, but usually this ties into the illustration chosen as the backdrop. You can decide if you find this helpful or distracting. Other than the end papers, everything is a gloss finish, which is definitely the best thing for an artwork like this one. But it will retain the oils from your fingertips, and so make sure your hands are clean or handle it sparingly. Again, the size of the book plays a major role in the effectiveness of scale, delivering cyclopean vistas and the tiny figures to measure their vastness against. A style illustrator Francois Baranger has some experience with. At the end, we have some aesthetic looking bibliographies of Lovecraft and Baranger, who is primarily known as a concept artist for movies and video games, including Harry Potter and cinematic extravaganza G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, as well as directing his own short film and providing cover art for several books. You can find him on all the regular websites, although his own is down at the moment. He is active on social media, and has both a personal Facebook and one dedicated to these new Lovecraft tomes. Where you can see work in progress and video of him painting, which is great for any budding artists out there. And for anyone interested in prints, he sells them on the popular website French Paper Art Club. Although you'd best hurry. The last word is reserved for Baranger's thank yous. But before this is a note from the editors saying Lovecraft's views and some of his writings are a bit controversial. Somewhat of a standard disclaimer for this material. And then we say goodbye with a mighty crack of the spine to wait however long it takes for an English translation or the next French book in the series. This tome is released by French publisher Braglion, who are well known for translating famous English-speaking authors and gaming books like Dungeons and & Dragons and Magic the Gathering. They are also no strangers to Lovecraft, with possibly a full complement of his works en français, and feature articles on their website too. Make sure you check them out for future titles in this series.